aromas are essential to the notion of food flavor and largely condition our food preferences. For that purpose, we will analyze how, an, how our body allows us to appreciate what we eat, thanks to our two main senses, which are taste and olfaction. The perception of taste is closely linked to smell, and so uh, the term taste today includes those two senses in everyday language. But taste or gustation is one sense that identifies chemical in the form of solution to receptor cells, mostly in the mouth, while olfaction or smell is the sense that analyzes volatile chemicals or odors which are present in the air. Next slide, please. So, to begin with, the taste. Taste is the perception produced or stimulated when a substance in the mouth reacts chemically with some taste receptor cells, which are located on what we call taste buds uh, in the oral cavity and mostly on the tongue. You have to know that we have between 2,000 to 5,000 taste buds which are located on the back, on the front of the tongue, and some others located on the roof, sides and back of the mouth and in the throat. As you can see, the taste buds are specific bunches of cells located uh, in the mouth, uh, specific cells which are connected to, nerve sims, to the nerve systems, which are able to uh, detect and uh, to transfer a message when they are connected to some chemical substances. So, uh, taste buds are able to distinguish between different tastes through detecting in, in some specific interaction with different molecules or ion. And there are mostly two types of detection uh, means. One is the connection through uh, cell receptors uh, mostly for sweet umami and, and bitter tastes and uh, for saltiness and soreness uh, the connection is made with some specific uh, alkali metal or uh, ions, hydrogen ions which can enter directly the cells through what is called a, a channel, pro, a proton channel. So originally the taste uh, has been uh, exist to sense both harmful or beneficial things that we put in the mouth. And that's why the taste modalities are classified as either appetitive or aversive. And as you can understand, uh, sweetness, for example, helps to identify energy-rich foods, while bitterness serves uh, mostly as a warning of danger because it's a sign of poisons. So today uh, we recognize officially five different tastes which are uh, recognized in the mouth. Uh, the list is sweetness, soreness, saltiness, bitterness and umami, also known as savoriness. And uh, scientific experiments have demonstrated that these five tastes exist and are distinct from one another. Uh, sweetness, as I told you, is regarded as a pleasurable sensation. Um, it, it's produced mainly by the presence uh, of sugars, but also some proteins and uh, also some other substances that mimic sugar. That's why many food can be perceived as sweet, uh, regardless of the actual sugar content. Uh, as you can see, there, there are some substances uh, mostly used as sweeteners, uh, like the steviol glycoside uh, coming from a plant which is two, 200 times sweeter than sugar. And uh, sweetness is detected by a specific means of recognition by the contact of some uh, sweet uh, substances to cell receptors which are uh, called the uh, GPCR. Soreness is the taste that detects acidity. Uh, the most common food uh, with uh, natural soreness are uh, fruits, um, mostly citrus, uh, such as lemon, uh, orange, tamarind, and, and bitter lemon, but also some fermented foods, uh, 
uh, such as wine, vinegar or yogurt, may have a, a sore test. Uh, sore test is detected by specific means of uh, recognition, which is a small subset of cells uh, in the test buds, which are called the type 3 test receptor cells. Uh, saltiness is a taste which is produced primarily by the presence of sodium ions. Uh, but other ions of the alkali metal groups, the ones which are in red on the screen, uh, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium and so on, uh, those, those alkali metals can have uh, a, a, a salty taste, but the further from the sodium in the classification, the less salty the sensation. That's why the, the sodium has the uh, saltiness index of 1, and from, from that you can compare the others. And uh, for instance, potassium, uh, uh, under the form of potassium chloride, uh, is the principal ingredient in salt substitute, uh, which has a saltiness index of 0 0.6 compared to 1 for sodium. So, um, well, uh, the recognition in, in this case is also uh, linked to the connection of the sodium ions directly uh, in the cells uh, through the, the, the um, uh, pr proton channel. It's uh, one of the most sensitive uh, tastes uh, because it's perceived as generally, generally as unpleasant or disagreeable. And in fact, uh, common bitter foods that we or beverage uh, include coffee, cocoa, and, 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 and so on. And it is uh, of interest because uh, mainly during evolution, uh, since a large number of natural bitter compounds are known to be toxic. So this ability to detect the bitter tasting, toxic compounds at very low threshold is considered to provide a very important protective uh, function in the evolution. Some people don't know umami as a taste because uh, it's quite new. Uh, it, the, the name is borrowed from a Japanese name meaning savory taste. Uh, it was first studied and discovered in 1907 by a Japanese guide uh, who has isolated this uh, taste and it has been uh, shown that uh, the taste came from mainly the presence of uh, the monosodium glutamate in the food that was tasting umami. It has been officially recognized uh, as a scientific term to describe the test of glutamate and nucleotides, but only in 1985. But now it is widely accepted scientifically as the fifth test. So umami, uh, umami is not tasty uh, on its own, but in fact it improves the flavor of the wide variety of food and increases the taste of the other tastes. Uh, the optimal uh, umami test is also felt uh, depending on the amount of salt which is present uh, with the other ingredients. So without salt the umami uh, taste is not that uh, important. And like for sugar of, uh, or uh, other tastes, uh, there are specific savory taste buds uh, which respond specifically to the presence of glutamate. is a special sense uh, through which smells or odors are perceived by the body. It occurs when an odor molecule binds to a receptor within the nasal cavity, transmitting a, a signal through the olfactory system, which is the nervous system. Olfaction, of course, has many functions, including of, at, the, at the origin the detection of hazards and also pheromone, and we know now that it plays a very important essential role in food tests. But apart from taste and, and uh, olfaction, further sensations can come from food and are felt in the mouth. Uh, they are, for, for those one, largely de detected by the, what we call the somatosensory system, which is a nervous system, and carried uh, to the brain after direct stimulation of different, different nerve cells which are present in the mouse. And those sensations are mostly what we call pungency or hotness or spiciness, coolness, numbness, astringency, 
metallicness, fat taste, heartiness, temperature, and starchiness. A lot of different type of sensations we come together with the other to give the, the global uh, sensation. Along with olfaction and also different nerve stimulations called chemistasis, determines the uh, flavor of the food and of the other ingested substances. That's a, 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 cl a complex uh, interaction between a taste, olfaction and all the other sensations that at the end give the food flavor. So, uh, the human tongue can distinguish only uh, five distinct qualities of taste, as, as, as we've seen while the nose can distinguish among hundreds of substances and even at very, very low quantities. And in this, in, in this mechanism, the retronasal smells plays the biggest role in the sensation of flavor. And because during mastication, the tongue, the tongue and, and the teeth will uh, transform the, the food, uh, some others, odorants, will, will be released. And that's the uh, these odorants which enter the nasal ca cavity during exhalation that gives most of the food flavor. Flavorings is the, the, the way to reproduce, standardize or strengthen the flavor of industrial food products and uh, they are developed by what people who are called flavorists. Today uh, the specific knowledge regarding food flavors allows the possibility to build up a tailor-made flavor to food components or ingredients. And the main way to, to achieve this, this target for food preparation is, of course, the use of flavorings. So what is a flavoring or aroma compound? There is a general definition, which is a volatile compound that allows the perception of taste and or smell. And there is also an official definition, a European one, that says that it's a product which is not in intended to be consumed as they are. Or uh, you see that there are two of them. The, the first two are uh, written in red, and I, uh, I will come back to it later. But that's mainly to, to, to understand that only those two uh, fl type of flavoring can be classified as natural. It's not true for the others, but we'll come back at the end. So, flavoring substance, what is it? It is officially a defined chemical substance having flavoring properties. So that means it's only one molecule, it's a pure product. When a flavoring preparation is a product other than a flavoring substance obtained from or foodstuff or a natural material, plant, animal, whatever, uh, that means that it's a, a complex uh, subst uh, mix, it's not a pure molecule. It is obtained by different techniques, uh, physical, enzymatic or microbiological processes, whatever it is, foodstuff or, or other materials. So the third category, smoke aroma, uh, it's a product which is obtained by fractionation and purification of condensed smoke, whatever they come from mostly used to make a product such as sausages, barbecue sauces, uh, on other, other types of uh, food, food preparation like this. Next one, uh, aromas obtained by heat treatment. Uh, there are products which are obtained by heat treatment from a mixture of ingredients, not necessarily processing uh, flavoring properties by themselves. The aim being to reprodu reproduce the reactions which occur naturally during the cooking of the food. Next category is the flavor precursors, the same product which not necessarily possess by themselves flavoring properties. They are intentionally added to the food for the sole purpose of producing flavor by decomposition or reaction with the other component during the food processing. And the last one, the other flavors, uh, in fact, they are all the ones that are not classified in the, in the previous uh, uh, classes. Uh, officially, a flavor can be qualified as natural if and only if its flavoring parts 
consist exclusively of natural flavoring substances and or flavoring preparation, which of course are natural by essence because to make pr flavoring preparations we use natural ingredients. So when we, when we use the, na the term natural in, on the label, uh, there are three ways to make it. We can use the term natural flavoring of X when X is a plant or an animal source of or food or f from a food or category of foodstuff. These flavors must contain at mi a minimum 95% weight by weight of the mentioned source and this source must always be recognizable. When when you use the term, the term natural flavoring of X and other natural flavorings, that means that um, it's based on the same principle, except that the source X has to be added to less than 95%. But uh, the same as before, this flavor must be easily recognizable. And the third category, when you use the term natural, is the term natural flavorings. You don't precise whatever it is. This term is used when the aroma or the taste of the sources used is not reflected in the aroma of the product intended for consumption. That means that you, you don't recognize uh, the, 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 the natural or the original uh, flavor of uh, aroma of the product.